Hey everyone, my name is Daniel Christian and in today's video we're going to talk about the new and improved settings in Power Apps Canvas Studio. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the eh, settings that are right now versus the wow settings that are coming up shortly. So stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now what I'm going to do is a thorough side-by-side -side comparison so you can actually see the differences. Now here I've logged into the Power Apps Canvas Studio. Nothing new, you're already familiar with this. And this is what it looks like. This is what the new one is going to look like. And again, the Canvas Studio is the exact same, it's the settings. But did you notice something? All right, let me do it again. I came here, this is the current Power Apps Canvas Studio over here. When I come in, bam, this first thing shows up over here. So old, new, old, new. The immediate first thing is that now settings is right one of the items. It's the sixth item on the menu bar, which is great because now I can just click on it and the settings shows up. I won't click on it yet because I will come over here to the old one and go to a file and here's where the settings are. And so when I click on the settings, this is what it's always been. I've been so used to this and it's not bad. It's not bad. But now let me show you the new one. I come in now to the new setting and right on the settings, I click on it and the settings pops up right there. So that was the first big one is that now settings is actually on the top menu and it's easily accessible and then it gets popped up directly over there in the, in, right up on the screen. So that, that was the big wow at least for me that immediately easily accessible and right up on the tab over there on the menu side. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the old menu settings, which is right here, you notice that it's kind of broken down into three different sections. It's the name plus icon, screen size plus orientation and advanced settings. That's the, you know, the three categories, if I may, that's how it is set up over here. Now, when we go to the new one, in the new one, it's broken up into four different categories and that's general display upcoming features and support. And we kind of go through those together one at a time, right? So let's dive in first directly into the general. Things I noticed in the general big ones were the ability to name it right here, which was pretty neat because in the power apps which we have before, to name an app, you gotta go directly over here, you gotta go into editing, and then in the editing, it takes you directly outside, and in a much less easier way to go ahead and make the changes, it's like right over here, right? In this current design. But like I showed, in the new design, click on it, right there, you're able to go and save it. So much more easier. So kind of this whole new setting changes, there is so much wowness behind the scenes over here, and that's why I wanted to take the time to build a separate video to explain this to you. But we are just getting started because right now in general, that was the one thing which was just to name it and put the description, but there was a whole separate section just on the icon side. So let's go back to the old one. In the icon side, let me go back to my apps. Um, if I wanna go ahead and change anything on the icon, it was great. I could select the icon, you know, whichever color that I want. I can go ahead and select the icon type. I can even go ahead and add my new icon. So all this is pretty neat, but there was one thing that was missing. Besides the fact that I could select any of the existing icons and I can select any of the background colors, I could not do anything to that specific icon color. Background colors I can change, not the icon color. And that is what they added in the new functionality. So in the new one, when I go in, right now I can go ahead and still find, I mean, I still add my icons and there was a little bit of extra wow factor they added. Right here, I can now search for the icon. There's a search bar over here. Look, in the old one, when you go in, click on any of the icons, you just scroll, 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 and hope you find what you're looking for. But in the new one, I can now search for it. It's really neat. And so if I go and now pick whichever icon that I want, I can go ahead and do a background fill. I can select everything, but guess what? I can now fill and add an icon color. See, so this is what it is. I can go and now put that color. So I got the background color, which is the background fill, and the icon color. The icon color is not available over here. All I have is the back, background uh, color and I can search for an icon, but I cannot do an icon fill. This new functionality gives me the icon fill. And I was really excited about that because that little thing was missing. We got it, I'm excited. So that was the first big one is that you got the option to, option to go ahead and put in the icon fill. Now, as far as adding the new icon, your own icon, that didn't change. Because if I go and hover over here, See that section which shows up? It'll tell you that it's still the 25, 245 by 245 pixel, PNG, JPEG, and JPG. 
those were the three options. And so that remained the same. When I came in here and put that hover on it, you will see that the recommended size image and the file format, uh, file types are the exact same. So that kind of remained very consistent. Other thing though, is when I came back to this place, the auto save functionality that saves right here. Like right now in the general section, right there, I'm able to go and do the auto save functionality right here. In the previous section to do the auto sale, I would actually have to first go into the account. It's not in the settings. I had to go to the account and then in the account, it'll give me that same functionality. So the functionality is the exact same. It's just I had to take a, a few clicks to go and find that auto save. Right now in the new design, that's what it is. It's right here in the general sections inside the settings, much more easier to compare with. And then moving down, all these other sections were the exact same. So there was no other you know, improvements over here besides the fact that a huge improvement on the icon, but everything else was pretty much the same. So the big one in general for me was the flexibility for the icon save and the icon fills. So those are the big ones. So now let's take a look at the display. So first thing is let's go back to the previous design. Previous design in the settings, we don't really have display. So that's, if you have already started noticing that there are also these names that have changed. So in the old design, it was called as screen size plus orientation. Here, you just have display. And display just makes sense, all right? Granted that, you know, screen size and orientation is more specific, which helps. But right here, it's the exact same thing. So let's go back and take a look at the previous design, all right? In the screen size and orientation, orientation is there, size is there. But I notice a little difference, all right? In the difference, I notice over here, there are radio buttons, while in the new design, there are drop downs. And I believe that drop downs were used to actually just save this real estate space so that it's, it's a pop up, which is nice. But now the real estate value, which is used over here or the area that's used over here is much smaller. Everything else is the same. I still have the two options for the orientation. I still have the same options for the size. So that hasn't changed. They just made a drop down over there to take up less real estate space, which makes perfect sense to me. So that was the one thing that I immediately noticed was the orientation and sizes now originally radio buttons, it switched over to the drop downs on them. Now, I think it's still a good idea because it helps in conserving the space. So that was the biggest one that I saw in display. Quick again recap, orientation and the size. Um, that's what the name was, screen size and orientation. Over here it's orientation and screen. Now, when we go and talk about the upcoming features, well, the upcoming features really wasn't there before. It was just called as advanced settings. So I go back in the previous one, and I look at advanced settings and in advanced settings, it was broken down into different sections. So, and if you had to find them, the different sections that is, you had to do a lot of scrolling. That was the one big thing I noticed, a difference I noticed in advanced settings because in the new one, first of all, it's called upcoming features. So there's no advanced settings. However, they've gone ahead and put in the tab. So there's less scrolling and it's easily accessible because like I'm doing previously, if I wanted to go to the preview or the experimental, I had to scroll all the way down to get it. Over here, if I want to jump straight to the experimental, I just click on the tab and I see the experimental. So I think that putting in the tabs literally saves you a lot. I mean, saves you less time to go hunting for it. And that just was an easy functionality. And then the upcoming features again is search. And that's the new things that I'm constantly seeing is that yes, there was search features over here, but there's also the search added and more easier ways to find out. Also, if you've noticed that some of the design and the sizes are all, you know, made a little bit easier in this case, it's pretty much the same broken it down. In fact, in the older one, there was these three, uh, four options, advanced settings, previews, experimental features, and deprecated features. Over here, it was called deprecated in the older design. In the newer design, it's just called retired. Again, a little simple name change, but the features were all the exact same. There's no changes happening in the features. So cons big takeaway in the, this section was it's not called advanced features anymore. It's just upcoming features and it's tab makes it easier, makes it faster to search for that. Okay, let's go to the fourth one, which is called as support. Now, in the older or the current design, there is no support. In fact, it was just called as account because in here, if you look at support, there is these functionalities available. And I'll look at that in a few seconds, but there's the environment, the authoring version, edit, session ID. Well, that wasn't there in the settings. To find that same support, which you see in the new one, over here, I actually had to come to account. And in account, I see that functionality. So to me, this was another huge improvement because I found this very important to be part of the overall settings, but it was kept as a completely separate section. To bring that together into one, into one settings, was I believe a huge step forward in the, in the right direction. 
because it just makes an improvement. Also, I like that the fact that in here, the authoring version and the ID, they're all easily accessible. I mean, sure, in the previous one, they were not that far. I mean, I would have come over here, I would find the version, I would have to click on change on the authoring version and get all this information. Not that bad, not that far away, but in the new design, it's right there. First of all, it's in the same settings and support, so I love that. But right here, I can go to the authoring version, I can get the authoring version, I can even edit it. The edit pop-up screen is the exact same, so not much difference on that side. But then the session ID is right there. Look, in the previous one, the session ID was not easily accessible. It's, in fact, it was called as diagnostics, and I would click on the diagnostics and I would get the session ID. In the newer design, right there. And it's not called diagnostics, it's just called in the support inside environments. Session details is the exact same. I still get the session ID and I still get the Powerhouse version. So that was the big changes over there inside the support. Other last thing was in the helpful links over here, that's what they call it, helpful links. And all in all, I noticed that there was some changes over here. Well, first of all, this is the look and feel on the helpful links. In this section, it was called about Power Apps. And the links over here were help, term release, open source licenses, privacy statement, and support. In the new one, they went ahead and even added community. And if you click on the community, it directly goes into the Power Apps community. As you all know, we are huge big fans, all the power addicts, this is where we go to go ahead and get our help. So adding that link, I think was a huge correct step in the right direction, because now I don't have to go in and search for it. Right in the About Power Apps, adding the new link really made it good. So wasn't this awesome? Well, I found it awesome because it's not just a enhanced UI and UX and the pop-up, but I noticed that they've really taken the time to improve on these settings. They also took feedback on what you need, additional, remember that icon color fill? Well, that's a pretty nice one. And then the flexibility to get everything now inside this one setting. So huge step forward, major thumbs up to all the people for the Canvas Studio who worked on this. Thank you so much for that. And as always, keep power apping. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.